A-level physics is really hard, but is it? A lot of the questions you're going to be asked in any exam are going to be relatively straightforward. And in this video, I'm going to go through seven of what I think are the easiest multiple choice questions, all coming in this case from OCR papers from 2023. And I hope that all of you can get all of the answers to this correct. So the first one, uh, which row only contains scalar quantities? So all we need to do is identify any vectors and we know that that can't be the answer. So we know that displacement is a vector, momentum is a vector, and therefore just by knowing that these three are vectors, the answer can't be A, B or D. So the answer for this one is C. Even if you're a GCSE student, you should be able to get that correct. The next question is this one here. Uh, the resultant force acting on a moving object is zero. So if there's no resultant force, that means the acceleration is going to be zero, and therefore we must have something moving at a constant velocity. So looking at these, we've got something uh, where we've got a constant gradient here, and that means as we have a constant gradient on this displacement time graph, where the gradient is equal to the velocity, We've got a constant gradient, constant velocity, and therefore the acceleration is zero. So here the answer is A. Again, a GCSE level question asked at A level. The next one looks a bit more confusing. We've got some apparatus, we've got something here, and it's about the experiment that you'll have carried out or you might have uh, been become familiar with about looking at absolute zero. And basically, what we're going to be doing is we're looking at the variation of gas pressure with temperature. So we're going to be looking at the relationship between P and T, and that means we must keep V constant. So which of these must be controlled? Well, the pressure of the gas is something that's going to be changing as we're changing the temperature. So those two things aren't being controlled. But what we are controlling is the volume of the gas. And therefore, that's one of our control variables. Uh, we've identified which is the independent and the dependent variable, and therefore the answer for this is C. So again, that question is really just about the scientific method. Okay, uh, from another paper, which of these is a base unit? So this is just a recall of one of the seven base units. So we're thinking about things like kilograms, seconds, and so on. Now here, uh, Joule and Newton are both derived units, so it can't be those. We've also got a meter squared, but it's not that. The answer is A, the ampere, or the amp. And that is one of the seven base units, and therefore the answer is A. Okay, uh, the next one, let's have a look. Um, so, a bit of a calculation. A 200 watt heater is used for 90 minutes. The cost per kilowatt hour is 13 pence. How much does it cost to use the heater? So, first of all, the amount of energy used is gonna be equal to the power times time. Now that's going to be equal to 0 0.2 kilowatts times 1.5 hours, which is equal to 0 0.3 kilowatt hours. Okay, I've just done it in my head. In your exam, use a calculator for any of these simple calculations just to make sure. And then all you need to do is multiply the number of kilowatt hours by the price per kilowatt hour. So that's going to be 0 0.3 times 13 which I did do on my calculator just to make sure, and that's equal to 3.9 pence, and therefore the answer for four is A. Okay, they're not so bad, are they? This is A-level stuff, remember, and obviously there are gonna be more tricky questions, but you've got to make sure that the easy ones you always get correct. The next question is looking at the PD across a resistor, so we know it's a kilo ohm, and the power is 20 watts. Now, even though nobody's gonna mark your work, it's still useful to write down the equation, and then rearrange it, and then put in your numbers, and then work out the answer. So that one is 141 volts, uh, which I guess the closest answer to that is C. Okay, so you will get some relatively straightforward calculations, but don't forget to always write down the equation, show some working to help you actually work out the correct answer. Don't make any silly mistakes, and therefore we get this answer over here. And the final one is which statement is Faraday's law? So we've got a load of stuff here to read through, but the first one, if we're looking at the direction of electric current induced by... magnetic field is such that the magnetic field created by the induced current opposes changes in the initial magnetic field. That's just basically Lenz's law, so it's not that. Uh, the second one is about uh, the magnitude of electrostatic forces. So that's going to be to do with Coulomb's law, so it's not that. Um, the total energy of an isolated system remains constant. Basically, that's just a law of conservation of energy, so it's not that. And therefore, the answer is C. And of course, if you know your definitions, 
that means you can just easily look through these, identify which of them relate to whose law, and therefore Faraday's law is C. So that one over there, not even a calculation needed. Now, really what I wanted to do there was show that although there will be tricky questions that come up in any A-level exam, a lot of the marks that everybody's going to be getting are from relatively straightforward things. It's about knowing definitions, it's about doing simple calculations, and it's often just about reading the question carefully and identifying which are the obvious false statements. So, I uh, hope that helps. If you want to find any more uh, answers to multiple choice questions, I do have a load of stuff over at alevelphysicsonline.com. I've got work solutions to at least 26 past papers that you can download and full video explanations of everything there as well, including all of the OCR, AQA and Edexcel papers from 2022 and 2023. So that's it. If you haven't already done so, make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.